Guys, I'm ready to give off my rapid fire predictions on what I think the college football playoff committee is going to do tonight when it comes to the top 10 rankings. This is no bias. This is hours of research, hours of looking at all the analytics. What do I think they're going to go with? Because I know I said it was, it was going to be Georgia 1, Tennessee 2. I've changed my train of thought and I'm fairly confident based off of a lot of different metrics that they like to use that I can get this top 10 right. And I'm having a real problem with number one and number two because, guys, after actually diving into all of the data, all of the numbers, the FPI, all of the strength ratings, number one and number two are going to be Tennessee and Ohio State in some order. And my official prediction right now, based off of everything I've seen and understanding that this is a you know a full data look at. You know, we've got to take into account Tennessee's very close overtime win over Pittsburgh. You know, those early season games. I'm going to say, listen, I think the committee ranks Ohio State number one overall. And I know people are going to say Ohio State doesn't have a big win. Tennessee beat Alabama. Guys, I get it. But when you look at everything, yes, Tennessee has the better strength to schedule. But Ohio State's FPI is significantly better. Any data, you know, metric ranking site is going to have Ohio State above Tennessee. If Ohio State faced Tennessee on a neutral field, Ohio State would be favored. Ohio State is more, you know, is rated higher according to Vegas, according to many different metrics, game control, things like that. I feel like we're becoming prisoners of the moment with Tennessee and we're so surprised at how good Tennessee's been this season. We forgot they've had some games. It's like we're holding Ohio State to a different standard than Tennessee. When we talk about Tennessee right now, that overtime win against Pittsburgh never gets brought up. If Ohio State had a non-conference game against Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and the game went to overtime. I mean, you would think it's World War III. You would not hear the end of it. So I think that's another situation where it's different standards. Give me Ohio State. I think the committee goes Ohio State number one. We don't get a 1v2 matchup. Ohio State one, Tennessee number two. It and that argument becomes Tennessee or Georgia. And to me, Tennessee, not even a question. Significantly better strength of schedule. You can say Georgia. Uh, you know, overall, in some of the other metrics are better, but the strength of schedule is so drastic. See, with Ohio State, the Buckeyes are mid-50 in schedule. It's not terrible. Georgia's in the 70s, and also the other issue with Georgia is their struggle against Missouri, where they were down by 10 points in the fourth quarter. The Kent State game, it's whatever, you know, but those are a few bad resume looks for Georgia. They do have the major week one win over Oregon, guys. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to talk about it. I think I would, I'm not going to say completely devalue it, but that's a week one game, okay? It's a week one game, and it seemed like Oregon rolled over. Now, listen, if you want to say Georgia's that much better than Oregon, okay, well, then what does that make Ken State? I know it's the transitive property thing, but, I mean, come on. Oregon's scoring three points. Ken State's scoring 22. Really? Missouri's beating Georgia by 10 in the second half? I don't get it, guys, but... All I can say right now, number one is Ohio State, number two is Tennessee, number three is Georgia. You know, I'm starting to really see it. I know what the committee is going to do. Number four, this is a lock, Michigan. Michigan will be number four. They're undefeated. Their strength of schedule is hurt severely by their horrible non-conference, but they've got that dominant win over Penn State where they annihilated the Nittany Lions at home and they ran all over them. Penn, uh, Michigan, excuse me, will be ranked number four. I'm very confident on that. And I'm also very confident Clemson. And a lot of people are agreeing. So Clemson will be number five. You, you know, their overall resume really isn't that good. It's funny. They had a bye week this past week, and it actually was, uh, you know, horrible for them. A lot of, you know, a few of their major huge wins. The Wake Forest win gets devalued because Wake Forest has an absolute meltdown against Louisville. Syracuse is probably going to be unranked when they lose to Pittsburgh this week. So we're seeing some of Clemson's big wins. And guys, there were people arguing that, oh, Clemson should actually be ranked at number one or number two because of their resume when they're beating a bunch of average teams. And you take a look at Clemson's overall FPI. They're ranked number seven. Their overall schedule... Um, up until this point, 
The NC State game, I'll give them credit. That was with Devin Larry, and NC State does have a good defense. I will say that they really did control the FSU game. That game got late. You know, that game got close later on. Uh, but overall, guys, this Clemson team, I've said it from the beginning, they have a 0% chance of winning the national title right now as we stand today because they've got a massive quarterback issue. And I've actually got Notre Dame beating them this week. Notre Dame's an underrated team, but either way, Clemson is number five. They are undefeated. They have a few decent wins. It's respectable. Guys, when it comes to the number six team, I am, uh, I'm extremely confident uh, it will be Alabama over TCU, and I know people are going to say it's SEC bias. It's ridiculous, but guys, when you look at Alabama, it really is a polarizing resume because technically they should have two losses. They should have lost week two, and then they should, you know, they lost to, to Tennessee. Um, but really, they could also have zero losses. If you look at that Tennessee game, they were up late in that game. You know, there were a few calls. One call didn't go their way. I remember some on an, an interception. Uh, but you, well, you're talking about, yes, they have one loss, but that one loss is against a top three team in college football on the road, and they lost that game by three points. We have to value context. And guys, I think the main issue with TCU trying to be above Alabama, uh, we're kind of treating them with kid gloves when we compare them to Alabama. For example, TCU right now, they're 14th overall in FPI. And you take a look at some of their wins, the double overtime win against Oklahoma State. They were trailing most of that game. West Virginia, you're allowing 31 points. Kansas State, um, I believe that, yeah, that was a major comeback there because of the backup quarterback situation. Uh, at Kansas, you allow 31 points. You win by seven. You were outgained significantly in that game, and it took another quarterback injury to Kansas for you to really, you know, help win that one. Uh, at, at SMU, you allow 34 points. Guys, it's simply too much. Alabama, you know, a much tougher schedule overall, although you could argue that TC, listen, these Big 12 schedules are not easy because there is no real bad teams in the Big 12. Now, there's no super dominant teams, but that's the one thing we do have to understand with the Big 12. There really is no break uh, in the Big 12 because all those teams are solid, but it's just a situation where, yes, Alabama has the one loss. Everyone, all the casual people are just going to look at it and say, oh, a one-loss SEC team gets ranked above an undefeated Big 12 team. That's SEC bias. Guys, I'm telling you, I've seen all the metrics. If you take context into it and you actually look at it, I can understand why. Personally, I would know. I would have no issues giving TCU the, the I believe, the number six spot in front of Alabama. I'm just telling you what I think the committee is going to do. And in my opinion, the committee will go Alabama, the one-loss team. The issue I have with Alabama is just, it's a few of these games, it's just not been dominant. I mean, look at the A&M game. They scored 24 points. I know you're going to talk about Bryce Young not playing. I get it. But even like, I just can't get that, you know, Texas game out of my mouth. And the one major flaw in some of these metrics is they value Texas so highly. So when Alabama beats Texas by one point on the road, that doesn't hurt Alabama because Texas is valued so highly. So the metrics are kind of warped to where, in my opinion, I saw Alabama struggle with a Texas team that, I mean, they're, they're, they've got talent, but I mean, that was a bad performance by Alabama and they probably should have lost that game in week two, but it was week two. We are going to go... Alabama number six, we're going TCU, undefeated TCU right now. This is what I think the committee is going to do at number seven. And then eight, nine, and ten is where it gets interesting and we could see a Pac-12 orgy in these three spots. So number eight should be Oregon. Of course, Oregon has that horrible week one loss. Other than that, they've been impressive. There's no other way to, de to describe it. Right now, they are they do deserve to be the highest ranked Pac-12 team based on what they've done in that conference. Uh, they've definitely proved it up until this point. So I'm going with, or, or I think they're going to go with Oregon at number eight. At number nine, um, we'll go ahead and say UCLA. Um, you know, you're really splitting hairs. The one thing that might hurt UCLA is their non-conference schedule. It is horrible. They just have the one loss. They've gotten a few big wins in conference, but they do have a terrible non-conference schedule. We're going with them at number nine. And then number 10, you're talking about, you know, Old Miss, 
USC. I'm going to go and say it's going to be USC. I think it's going to be three Pac-12 teams, and you're definitely splitting hairs there as well. I just think Ole Miss, their overall game control, their overall resume is not good enough. When you look at USC, um, you know, it is a Pac-12 schedule, but their one loss is a road loss to an extremely good Utah team. They lost the game by one point. So I think USC rounds out the top 10 and is ranked number 10. So guys, once again, I'm going with Ohio. This is what I think the committee is going to do. It's Ohio State number one. It's Tennessee number two. It's Georgia number, but may they might, I'm not saying they might go Tennessee number one if they value the wins. I'm just talking about when you look at the full resumes, Ohio State, it is superior to, to, to Tennessee. When we're evaluating it fairly, a lot of people don't like talking about Tennessee's overtime victory over Pittsburgh because they don't want to treat the programs the same way because Ohio State's been way better than Tennessee for the past 10 years or whatever. Um, but guys, when you look at everything, it's Ohio State number one. It's Tennessee number two, it's Georgia number three, it's Michigan number four, Clemson at five, Alabama six, TCU seven, Oregon coming in at number eight, UCLA. You could honestly go USC at number, well, the last three two spots are tough because you could go USC at number nine, but I'll say UCLA um, and then USC at number 10. That would be my official prediction for what I think the initial Playoff committee rankings are going to be here on November 1st. We will see. It should be interesting. The top 25 is going to be really interesting. Maybe Maryland gets ranked. You know, what's going on with Liberty? Imagine Liberty is unranked. That would be hilarious because it's like they're ranked right now for two days, but then they get unranked because everyone just switches to whatever the committee says. And these are actually going to be our official rankings. So when you see Ohio State at number two, like Georgia, I believe they're number one right now in the AP poll. That's going to change. There's no way. Now with their strength of schedule, I would be shocked if Georgia, looking at everything, would be ranked number one. Um, the only way I could see is maybe the committee just thinks Georgia's better than everyone, so they're going to put them at number one. But in terms of like looking at it subjectively, I'd be shocked if Georgia is in any other position than number three. Um, when you look at all the metrics and things like that, I guess you could make an argument, Georgia, you know, according to Vegas, there should be number two behind Ohio State, but I just think their strength, the schedule is so bad. They have one good win, and that good win was kind of a weird week one game, I mean, if we're being honest. So, guys, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, tonight. We'll all be watching, I'm sure, the initial release. I don't know what time, maybe 7 o'clock, maybe 9 o'clock. It seems like they... Tonight, hopefully it's 7 o'clock. I mean, I, I don't want to sit here and wait until 9.30 to see these rankings, but we will see. Either way, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.